In the far-off kingdom of Hallownest, a great worm had just reached the kingdom's edge. When it arrived, the worm died, shedding its current form and emerging as a small, pale being. The Pale King. This is where the correct lore ends. Right! First thing we need to establish is that the Pale King is hot. I'm talking Daniel hot. So, the first thing he did was canonically have sex with your mother. Uh, moving on. The Pale King was so hot that his rule immediately took hold, spreading to the majority of civilizations in Hallownest. Everything was great. Until... The bees! I cannot stress enough how bad this was. So the bees had a queen, as all bees do. Right, so this queen was the Radiance. The Radiance's light shone so bright that they rejected the Pale King. This was bad, really bad. The Radiance saw the Pale King's rule as a threat to her territory. So this immediately started the Hallowness Civil War. So this wasn't epic. The bees immediately ravaged the kingdom. The Pale King had no choice but to assemble the five great knights. These great knights were Zoat, Elderbug, Luke Matthews, Bunker, and Abraham Lincoln. These brave warriors were able to hold off the bees for a time, but little did the Pale King know the bees would be the least of his worries. The Radiance used her power over the light to create a perfect soldier. The Invisible Man! him for short. The Radiance's philosophy was that you can't fight what you can't see, but the Pale King wasn't going to give up that easily, for he had hatched a plan. To fight the Radiance's champion, he would have to create his own. This is when the Pale King's forces began experimenting on a strange substance known as Void, found deep in the Abyss. The battle was even, until the Radiance released its greatest threat. Tim began to spread a plague throughout the caverns of Hallownest. Once infected by it, the bugs of Hallownest would become GINGER! I can't even imagine the horror. Bugs who became ginger would immediately become too depressed to fight and render them utterly useless to humanity. Whoever was to fight the Invisible Man would need to be able to contain this infection upon defeating it. This is where the Pale King's experiments with Void came into play. The Pale King wanted to use the Void to create a perfectly hollow being. A being with no mind to think, no will to break, and no voice to cry out in suffering. Two beings were created. Well, there were others, but we don't talk about those. These beings were Hornet, some girl who the Pale King gave away at first uh, for some reason. I don't know. Don't don't ask me. What, do I look like I know what I'm talking about? And the Hollow Knight. This is the player character in the game, and also the one who would be trained to defeat Tim. The idea behind creating a perfectly hollow soldier was so that they wouldn't complain about having to fight an enemy that they couldn't see. They also wouldn't complain about the jar that they would have to hold during the fight to contain the infection. Because, come on, let's be honest, that'd be, like, really annoying. While the Hollow Knight was being trained, the five great knights were holding off Tim in the ancient basin near the Pale King's palace. Sadly, all but one of them were struck down in battle. Luke Matthews bravely sacrificed himself to save Bunger, who fled into the kingdom's caverns, never to be seen again. The Hollow Knight was finishing its training in the Pale King's court, when suddenly a new wave of infection broke out. The Pale King used dream magic, which is, like... Um, a thing that I never mentioned before. Uh, to peace out so that he wouldn't be ginger. This left the Hollow Knight as Hollow Nest's last stand. It drew its nail and made its way to the Temple of the Black Egg, where Tim resided. The two did battle until the Hollow Knight struck down Tim once and for all. Infection began to spew out of the Invisible Man, but the Hollow Knight strategically captured it in a jar. The day was saved, and everyone lived happily ever after. That's all on Hollow Knight's lore. And, um, the power's next time, I swear.